right, so F8, um, ISO 100, bracketing the exposure because of the super bright highlights that are all the way back in the back of this basin because of the, the bright sun. And because we have kind of a dim foreground here with lots of uh, shadows and blacks in it, which is just, I suspect it's a little beyond the dynamic range of the camera. So just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna bracket the exposure, which means uh, shooting one normal, shooting one stop over and one stop under so that I get a lighter and a darker version that I could use independently if I want to, or I could blend all three together as well to create one composite image. This is looking really, this is looking really good by the way. I am, I am feeling good about this. Okay, so one of the things that I'm noticing about this is that it's a little, it's a little messy because there's a few rocks here in the foreground. And I want to shoot this at a focal length of um, 35 millimeter. I'm gonna try some wide angle too, but I wanna do, I wanna do 35 millimeter because uh, I don't know, there's something just, just natural about 35 millimeter that I just have always really liked. Okay, so I'm a little off center, but this is, this is looking pretty good. Yeah, all right. Actually, I wanna show you something. All right, so here's a little tip for you. One of the things that I like to do um, that, that honestly I, I kind of forgot was even in the camera, but uh, I think pretty much every camera has this. You'll notice that um, on my, Canon 5D Mark IV here, I have a grid lines. You know, there's a diagonal line cutting this way, a diagonal line cutting this way, and where they intersect in the middle is the, uh, is the center point of the grid, obviously. And the nice thing about using this is that then you're able to compose your image, especially in a situation like this where I'm trying to emphasize the diagonals, because, you know, this rock here is on this diagonal line here, the diagonal line is intersecting with this rock over here on the left side. And then the center where they cross is right where that center rock is, which is nice because then I know that it's at least uh, compositionally in harmony, like as far as the balance of the image. And maybe, yeah, I mean, it's probably heavier on the right because that rock in the foreground is just a little bit bigger, but not too big of a deal. I mean, it's definitely by composing it and using this grid line this way, it really helps align it and, and just make sure that you're doing it right so that you're not eyeballing it. Really, really nice. Very beautiful color back here in the, uh, in the back. Actually, hold on a second. There you go. I'm darker now, but now you can see that. Now I've properly exposed it for the, for the background. And this gets to my point earlier about dynamic range, actually, because you can see that uh, you kind of have to pick one or the other. Like, do you want to emphasize uh, exposure shadows or highlights? And I'm exposing for highlights right now and, and uh, we're getting this. So yeah, really nice color, right? It's beautiful. So one of the things that I noticed unfortunately was um, I, I look back at a couple of images and the center rock in the back was the, the top of the rock was just touching the horizon line. And there wasn't enough of a gap between the two. Anytime you have an element that's kind of, that's kind of um, like uh, pressing up against some kind of line, whether it's a horizontal line or a vertical line or something like that, it, it gets a little uncomfortable because it creates this pressure and this tension between the two, where what you need is just a sufficient, just a little bit of a gutter between um, that uh, particular shape and the horizon line that's out in the, diff in the distance. So I'm kind of, I'm a little scared. I'm kind of doing this, um, this uh, little bit of a, well, is, does anyone know what the word cattywampus means? I know what cattywampus means. Cattywampus, I think it's like a Southern phrase or something. I don't know. Um, cattywampus, yes. Yeah, so it's kind of, it's kind of like messed up right now, but I have it up higher because I needed to get even taller <laughs> than the extra tall tripod. And um, I have it kind of like up on some of these rocks here. And, oh man, I'm just trying to, trying to make do. But wow, yeah, totally. In general, this is, um, I try not to get too excited about 
uh, you know, images on a viewfinder, you know, because a lot of times you'll get back and look at them and think, man, what was I thinking? That, that just totally didn't work at all. Uh, and sometimes it's the images that you didn't expect to be any good that turned out better than expected. You just never can tell. What a beautiful night out here. This was fantastic. The light has pretty much, I mean, the, the nice like pink and magenta has disappeared from down here at the bottom. It's still up here. This is back where Badwater Basin is. And I'm sure that some photographers are out there are probably having the time of their lives right now. I bet, I bet it's beautiful and I bet they're getting some pretty awesome shots. So that's exciting. It's always nice to see um, to see a, a good sunset and a good sunrise because you know that somebody somewhere is probably getting some good results with it. But for me, I've just been here and I've been hanging out with these rocks and trying to make something work. Hopefully it works. I mean, I, I, I really don't know. I think what I've learned from doing this and, and just doing it, you know, hour after hour, day, you know, day after day is that you just have to keep shooting. You gotta keep trying. You gotta, you know, just, keep looking, keep exploring, keep trying to find new opportunities, um, new things to get you excited and hopefully come away with some original, different, uh, you know, unique photographs that are unique to you. And that, you know, will not only be something good for your portfolio, but something that you're proud of because um, it wasn't something you read about. It was something that you went out and found. And that's a pretty good feeling, I think. So yeah, hopefully everything works out. But for now, it's time for me to, uh, before it gets totally pitch black out here, it's time for me to uh, pack all this stuff down and uh, head back to the van and say goodnight to Death Valley. By the way, if, um, if you are interested in videos about landscape photography, about photography gear, about photo processing, things like that, I'm gonna be making some videos coming up uh, in the future about processing using both Lightroom and Photoshop. I don't consider myself to be a master at it by any means, but I've been doing it a long time and I know um, a fair amount about it. And besides, in today's digital world where you have to do something with your photo because everything is, you know, well, you're probably shooting raw. When you shoot raw, you can't use the photos straight out of camera. You gotta do something with it. They have to be processed somehow. So hence the need uh, to always be leveling up our knowledge about post-processing. And I love watching videos uh, from other photographers when they talk about post-processing. So I guess this is kind of my way of um, offering some of my knowledge and some of the things that I've learned. And um, hopefully it'll be of benefit to some of you out there. So if you stumbled across this channel and you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to it. It really does make a difference in um, in the growth of the channel and what I'm able to do on YouTube, I would appreciate it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Questions, comments, thoughts, whatever you got, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. All right, that's it. I'm packing up and heading back. I'll see you next time. <laughs>